Slide rulers work by adding and subtracting logarithms. So for instance, in order to multiply two numbers, you would add the logarithm of the two numbers, then take 10 raised to the power of that sum to get the product. So for instance, if I want to multiply 2 times 3, I start by taking the logarithm of 2. Then I take the logarithm of 3. Then I calculate the sum of those two logarithms. Then I raise 10 to the power of that sum to arrive at the product, 6. This illustrates the same concept graphically. The first line represents the logarithm of 2. The second line represents the logarithm of 3. The third line represents the summation of those two logarithms and is also equal to the logarithm of the product of 2 and 3. To do this same calculation on the slide roller, we start by finding 2 on the D scale. Then we line up the left index of the C scale with 2 on the D scale. Then we move the cursor to 3 on the C scale and we read the answer 6 on the D scale. Division is accomplished by subtracting logarithms. So in order to divide 8 by 2 we start by calculating the logarithm of 8 is about 0.9. Then we calculate the logarithm of 2, which is about 0.3. The difference between 0.9 and 0.3 is 0.6. Finally, we take 10 raised to the power of 0.6 to arrive at our quotient, 4. Graphically, dividing 8 by 2 looks like this. We start with a line whose length represents the logarithm of 8. Then we place a line next to it whose length represents the logarithm of 2. The difference between these two lines represents the length of the logarithm of 4. To calculate 8 divided by 2 on the slide ruler, we start by finding 8 on the D scale. Then we move the slide so the divisor 2 on the C scale is lined up with 8 on the D scale. Then we move the cursor to the left index of the C scale and read the answer 4 on the D scale. You may have noticed that the slide ruler only has numbers 1 through 9 on it. This creates a problem if you multiply two numbers together whose product is greater than 10. Say for instance you're going to try to multiply the numbers 8 times 4. The sum of these two logarithms is greater than 1 which means the product of the two numbers is greater than 10, which cannot be represented on the slide ruler. What we need to do is figure out mathematically how much greater than 10 the product is. We can do this by both adding and subtracting 1 to both sides of the equation and rearranging terms. This may seem awfully complicated, but as you'll see in a moment when it's performed on the slide ruler, it's actually a very easy operation. Graphically, the process of multiplying two large numbers together looks like this. We start with a line whose length represents the logarithm of the first number. Then we subtract from it 1 minus the logarithm of the second number. The difference we end up with represents the logarithm of one-tenth of the actual product. To perform this operation on the slide ruler, we start as before by finding 8 on the D scale. But this time, instead of using the left index of the C scale, we'll use the right index of the C scale. Then we move the cursor so it lines up with the second number, 4, on the C scale, and we read the answer, 3.2, on the D scale. Now we just have to remember that since we use the right index of the C scale, that means we have to multiply our final answer by an additional power of 10. You run into a similar problem when you divide a small number by a larger number. Say for example you're going to divide 4 by 5. The difference of the two logarithms is a negative number, which means that our 
actual answer is going to be less than 1. Again, we add and subtract 1 to both sides of the equation, rearrange terms, in order to find out how much less than 1 our final answer should be. Graphically, the process of dividing a small number by a large number looks like this. The first line represents the logarithm of the numerator. The second line represents the length of 1 minus the logarithm of the denominator. Placing these two lines end to end gives us a line whose length represents the logarithm of 10 times our answer. Dividing a small number by a large number starts the same way as it did before, by finding the first number on the D scale. Then we move the slide so the denominator on the C scale lines up with the numerator on the D scale. What's different this time is instead of using the left index of the C scale to find the final answer, we use the right index of the C scale. This tells us our final answer must be reduced by a factor of 10. The numbers on the A scale represent one half of the logarithm of each number. This gives you an easy way to calculate squares and square roots. Reading from the A scale to the D scale is like taking the square root. Reading from the D scale to the A scale is like raising to the power of 2. The K scale works exactly the same way, except here it is for doing cubes and cube roots. The F in the CF and DF scales stands for folded. These folded scales are offset from the C and D scales by the value of pi. Reading from the D scale to the DF scale has the effect of multiplying by pi. But that is not the only purpose of these scales. Having scales that are offset means that you can save time and accuracy by not having to move the slide around as much. For example, in order to multiply 4 times 6, I don't have to use the right index of the C scale. I can use the index of the CF scale. Slide rulers are very handy for calculating ratios. Here I'm going to calculate a ratio and multiply the result in one step. First I find 5 on the D scale. Then I move the slide so the 8 on the C scale is lined up with the 5. Then I just move the cursor over to the 4 on the C scale. And read the final answer on the D scale. The I in the CI scale stands for inverted. It has the effect of calculating 1 over the number. Since dividing by a fraction is mathematically equivalent to multiplying by the number, this means we can use the CI scale to do two multiplications at once. In this example, we start by finding 2 on the D scale. then move the slide so that 3 on the CI scale is lined up with 2 on the D scale. Then we just move the cursor to 4 on the C scale and read the final answer on the D scale. The techniques I just described can greatly improve the speed and accuracy of your calculations. Here is an example of a multi-step calculation that can show the difference. First, multiply 300 by 8. Then multiply the result by 2. Multiply that result by 4. Then divide that result by 12. Using the folded and inverted scales, we can do this calculation in half the time and half the number of slide movements. First multiply 300 times 8 times 2.
Then multiply that result by 4 and divide by 12. 